Lova, huh? we have two linear algebra problems. Let's begin with the first one. Uh, we have a basis for vector space E. We have some vector in that vector space. And we have to show that uh, if there's a data beta in the composition process, the linear coefficient that is not equal to zero, then if we were to substitute uh, x beta for this vector, the basis would still be a basis. So let's begin. Now, the way I would approach it is uh, I want to uh, represent x beta through alpha in terms of alpha. So let's do exactly that. Uh, we have uh, a not equal to beta. And we have uh, a theta a times uh, xa and uh, plus uh, the beta and x beta. Now if we were to move the sum to the other side, we essentially have uh, as this relation. And now we can multiply both sides by the inverse of uh, this thing over here, of data beta. And it all turns out that we can express x beta like this. So now let's take some other vector. Let's take vector, let's call it b. Actually, let's not even call it anything. Let's just express it as a sum directly. The sum. A yeah, times let's call the sequence gamma A yeah, X A yeah. and now uh, we have to drive this sum to be uh, of uh, this form instead have to drive the sum to be of uh, form. Actually, how do we call this part coefficient thing? Okay, let's label it k, yeah? And uh, alpha. Cool. Actually, let's not even label it anything. Let's just create a new constant here. Let's call it something like uh, u. So, if we can get this uh, expression to look like uh, this form, that will mean that uh, you can compose a vector, any vector, uh, with uh, this basis. Okay, so let's begin by just simply pulling out the beta here again, nothing out of the ordinary. plus gamma beta, x beta. Now, since we need to get rid of all mentions of uh, x beta, we can uh, use uh, this way, I've expressed it before, in terms of alpha. So we have this here. Now, let's create some nice variable for notation sake, let's call the t, uh, something like gamma beta times uh, the multiplicative inverse of uh, data beta. So the above part is going to be equal to, okay, let's apply distributive property right away. We have a plus uh, t alpha uh, minus this sum. And uh, we also have t here. Okay, now the thing is, we can clump in those sums because uh, they're summating over the same exact elements here. So it's really easy to just clump it in together. Here we will have uh, 
comma a yeah then we're gonna subtract uh t times uh that's a a yeah all of that times x a uh, plus t alpha now let's define a new sequence uh let's call it sequence delta and delta a is going to be gamma a minus t uh that a it's going to be equal to the sum a not equal to beta and then we have a uh, delta a yeah times a uh, x a plus t a yeah and would you looked at that we essentially got this form over here means that we can describe any vector with this basis okay cool now thing is we didn't exactly prove that it will be still nearly independent now thing is we can compose really any vector with this despite lacking uh some x beta So, uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and prove it anyways, because uh, I feel like this is just uh, being too verbose and uh, showing it directly would be better. So, the uh, thing is, we have taken alpha and that is equal to this, right? Uh, if we were to express alpha as uh, this over here again, We know that uh, this system over here is a basis. That means that uh, the representation for alpha is unique. And that means that uh, if we were to say that alpha is equal to this sum, uh, therefore invalidating it to be uh, an independent vector family, that would suggest that uh, data beta is equal to zero, which is uh, essentially a contradiction because we have specifically defined the data beta to be not equal to zero. So that's why it's going to be linearly independent, not just a basis. Okay, cool. Uh, let's continue. Now we have this problem, which uh, is very closely related to the previous one that we had here. Uh, to sum this problem up, it essentially means that if we have some basis, we have some composed vector, and we can replace any vector in the basis with the composed vector, uh, given that the composed vector includes uh, uh, the vectors that we're substituting. Okay, is that a beta is going to be equal to zero for uh, x beta that we're replacing? It's going to play a crucial role in this problem over here. Uh, we have to prove uh, that uh, if we have a basis of E and we have uh, some system of linearly independent vectors, then we can go ahead uh, and uh, replace uh, vectors in the original basis with uh, any of the vectors that are linearly independent here. So the thing is, uh, since this is a basis, that means that uh, every vector here can be expressed as uh, a sum. Uh, let's take that a again. It's a handy one. Times x a. Now, if that's the case, then we have uh, two cases to review where for all uh, that uh, uh, a is going to be zero. Now let's look at this. That will suggest that uh, AI is going to be a zero vector. Do you know what that means? If there's a zero vector in uh, a system, it's going to be linearly dependent. And we have already said that it's not linearly uh, dependent. So this part over here is practically invalidated. That means there's at least some 
data, uh, let's call it uh, data beta, it is not equal to zero. And that will suggest that we can go ahead and replace uh, any element in the original basis with this one and get a new one which is basically going to be something like x a a belongs to okay not just a yeah belongs to a capital uh, better not equal to any that belongs to a capital and unionized with uh, a i yeah and now we can just continue the process for every single one of them until you run out of them i would write this down more inductively but i'm lazy and you get the points entirely so that's how we would go about this problem uh that's it for today Bye, thank you for watching.